In this video, I'm going to be talking about partial fraction decomposition, but this time it's going to include repeating factors. So if you're looking for a basic example, you might want to go check out the video that I've already made. It's called Partial Fraction Decomposition, a basic example. So let's start off with this, the same steps that we take in the last problem. This time we want to start with factoring the denominator. And so I look here and I see that, hey, I've got an x in both terms. Um, I also have an x. You know what? I need... There we go. <laughs> need to correct my problem. You see, I've already got some scribbles because I made one originally that didn't work. I didn't want to waste paper. So let's see here. Now, if I factor out, I can factor out an x squared. The bottom factors out into x squared, and I have an x plus 1 remaining. Now, normally you would say, hey, i got two chunks of stuff here. I've got an x squared chunk, and I've got an x plus 1 chunk, so you're going to need two fractions. But the thing is, is anytime you have a square, an exponent in the denominator, we have to represent every power of that term leading up to the power that's represented here. Uh, that was a little bit confusing, so let me restate. In other words, we're going to need then three fractions. We need one that has the x plus 1. Easy enough. We also know that we're going to need one that has the x squared term on the bottom. But the thing that is not intuitive, that doesn't come logically to us, is that we also need to represent x to the first power here. So if I have an x squared, I, I, I need to represent x to the first power and x to the second power as different fractions. And now I can say those are the three fractions that I need to add together. Now, once again, our task is to solve for a, b, and c. And I know in the end I need to get a negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 over x cubed plus x squared. Now, if I told you that I needed you just to add these three fractions together, you would need to find a common denominator. And the common denominator is going to be x squared times x plus 1. So I see here that my a is missing the x squared term. So I need to take then a times x squared. I see here that my b is missing not only a power of x, so I need to multiply it by one more x, but I also am missing the x plus 1 term over here. So I need to take it times both of those fractions, or both of those denominators. The c term already has the highest power of x. It has the x squared, so I only need to multiply the c term by x plus 1. Now I can put those all over my common denominator of x squared times x plus 1. And those need to add together to get negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 all over. If I factored this out, that was still the x squared times the x plus 1. And once again, we find out that, hey, looky there, our denominators cancel out. So now the next step is this. I'm going to take the a, the b, and the c, and I need to distribute all these terms throughout. So I need to say that negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, I can find that by saying I have ax squared plus bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c. I've just distributed the a, the bx, and the c throughout each term. Now, just like last time where I grouped the x's together, this time I want to start by grouping the x squares together. So I notice that I already have them together. These two terms right here, if I wanted to, I could factor an x squared out of them. So I could say I really have a plus b times x squared. These two terms here in the middle, I say they have, see that they only have an x not an x squared, but just an x. So if I wanted to, I could factor that x out, and I could say that's b plus c times x. And then I have this lonely little c here left at the end. Now remember, this all has to add up to negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. And conclusions that I can draw from this statement then are this. If I have 2x squared terms and they're a and bx squared, a plus b better add up to negative 2. I know then if I have terms here with just one power of x that b and c better add up to whoops better add up to 5. 
And then last but not least, terms without an x, I only have a c over here. c has got to be 3. Which makes things quite simple because if c was 3, that means that I know that b plus 3 is equal to 5. So b must equal 2. And if I know that b is equal to 2, that means that a plus 2 has got to be equal to negative 2. So a has to be negative 4. And so now I can go back with these three answers in mind, and I can plug them into my original equation, which is all the way up here. That tells me that this fraction of negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 all over x cubed plus x squared, I can actually write as negative 4 over x plus 1 plus 2 over x plus 3 over x squared. And I have my answer.